people would like to hear the first word, please feel free to do so. As well. Uh, I have many words to say that I've prepared. Uh, to begin with, the, 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 the greatest tribute to, to Mom, to Bobby, is are the people here. So good. They are kind of in with Hashem, she has created. Um, I was born November 12, 1912, in Cleveland, Ohio. And she grew up in an era when being from was not the in thing in Cleveland or in the United States in general. There were no Jewish schools, day schools to go to to learn in. Nevertheless, her parents, Janie Yitzchak and Baba Sarah, very strong, were very strong and instilling in their children a love for all aspects of Yiddishkeit. Their home was open to all Jews. Many Gedolim, many other Jews from Europe and other places stayed at the Feigenbaum home. Her mom learned what it meant to care for other Jews. She learned the true meaning of Achmasus Archim. Of course, the ultimate, the ultimate sacrifice, actually giving their home to the Tells of Yeshiva. Her home was one of learning, living, of singing, Zmiros, Salashudas, Malka, all the various aspects. And it was all done with a tremendous, tremendous love and great spirit. She had private Torah learning, as did her seven brothers. And even as a young woman, she shared her learning with other, with other students, younger students. She was also artistically gifted, would have liked to go to learn design in the school, she had said many times. The times were difficult. The family couldn't afford it. But we always enjoyed mom's arts doodling, and who everyone could attest to her beautiful handwriting. In fact, my bar mitzvah invitation was written by mom and printed by dad. Mom married, I believe in 1936. Together they built a Bayes Nimlam in Israel, dedicated to serving Hashem, both Beit Adam Lamakom and Beit Adam Lachavera, instilling in their children a love for Torah and mitzvahs involving themselves in the needs of Klai Israel. Mom was involved in so many different causes. Torah Sora, Young Israel, Apollo Mizrahi, Shivadas, many more. She was the only woman to sit on the Varachim, the Hebrew Academy of Klik. Today we take it for granted that there are yeshivas, mikvahs, and so many other organizations. We don't realize they wouldn't have come about without the tremendous effort which people such as mom and dad put forth in order to establish these things. We must show our Akkurat to these people. Mom was a tireless worker, giving totally herself to these organizations and authors, many in leadership roles. As young children, we didn't always appreciate seeing our mother leave at night to attend meetings. But we realized that it must have been important in order for mom to leave her children. Mom gave her total support to dad. She took care of all his needs, whether at home, his work as a gabai, and his printing shop. They lived a modest life. But they knew where their prior priorities stood. Mom was a giving person, not only to her own children, but to so many others as well. There was a needy girl who lived in our, home, in our house in order to be able to attend the yeshiva. There was a Russian family who lived in her home on leaving the Soviet Union because they had another place to live. Later on in life, she was visited each Shabbos by a number of young women from one of the schools. She became their buddy. She was sharp, intelligent, and witty, and she never complained. And she truly showed a concern for each one of them. On graduation, they continued 
that relationship. As she got older, and her faith remained strong in the Kaddish Baruch Hu, her mind remained clear till the end. And people recognized that, and they realized who she was. They came for, to her for brachos, for advice. She would share jokes also with people. We just pointed out, she, now towards the end of her life, she really was someone who appreciated the joke. This week, this last week before she passed away, I asked her how she was feeling. She answered with her hands. And uh, Brocholina pointed out also, she had asked her how she's feeling. She says, well, I'm doing Baruch Hashem all right, but I'm, I'm not up to you to doing, uh, you know, back, back spins and hand, you know, like, like Leah does. But Baruch Hashem, everything's good. And we all remember mom for so many different things come to mind. Their new coffee, crossword puzzles, scrabble, dad. I always remember when I was a little boy, she was baking. I just would hope that there would be some batter left over in the bowl. So I'd be able to scrape them. I remember when she made blitzes. She didn't buy frozen blitz. She made blitzes by hand. She used to hope that she didn't have enough filling to fill all the, the what? That's what. So that I would, so she would give me at the end one of the blitz left to eat by itself. And then was very fun. Not You know, the home is very, a happy home for Hashem. A lot of singing, as we mentioned. The story of the family was, 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 was so important to her. We had the story gatherings. We were very happy in Lebedic. We had Feigenbaum family meetings. Because Zadie, my Zadie, used to said that the family should continue to get together. Important to family, Feigenbaum family club. We had picnics together. And I would call mom on Arab Shabbos. She would ask. We're ready for Shabbos. And I would say, we're getting there. And that became a special joke. I would always ask, are you getting there? <laughs> Again, before I left on Thursday, I said, she said, good Shabbos, and I said, we're getting there. <laughs> she was very proud of the most of her, of her children. Grandchildren. And she used to ask me, at the same time, she knew that my wife, that Puma, did not have it so easy, you know, she worked very hard getting together meals every shop with so many people. So she would always say, she's always working so hard, she needs a rest. She needs a rest. And how he loved her, her grandchildren, her children, her grandchildren, her great grandchildren. Whenever they would visit her, she would share with me their fachmas, how smart and advanced they were. She so enjoyed when she was visited by her family. She always wanted them to stay longer. But I wished her a fushlema. She thanked me and then she wished me a, 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 a fushlema for everyone in the world. She always said good Shabbos. So some say, well, she said good Shabbos because she was used to talking to me mostly on Friday and she'd always say good Shabbos. She, any day of the week now she said good Shabbos. I think she said good Shabbos not only because of that, but because Shabbos. Shabbos to her was Me'en Olim Habla. That's how she lived her life. It was real. I talked to her over Naftali many times. How did she? In those days, they may have not had the same education we had. 
we had, and that maybe not, you know, they didn't, we weren't, they didn't have all the opportunities that we had, but it was real. It was Emma's, an Emma's kind of Yiddish kind that she and Dad had, and she gave it over to her, her to her fashion. This week, of course, we know we're in the middle of the nine days, and uh, I think it's very significant that Mom passed away during the nine days. Because we were mourning for the Mesa Mikdash, because I'll tell us that when a great person passes away, it's like the destruction, it's like the, the destruction of the Mesa Mikdash. Because their life is the epitome of what Mesa Mikdash is. Mesa Mikdash is a place where people get together to serve like a Baruch to understand what it means to be close with Hashem. And that's what a person like a mom, Bobby, is able to do. In her presence, you, you knew there was something different there. There was a Kodesh Baruch Hu was present, in your presence with her. It wasn't just a regular thing. I could go on and on. I'm going to conclude that uh, when asked Mechila, Mom, we, didn't, we did, uh, didn't do as much as we could for her. Tell her how much we love her and how, is, how important it is for us to continue in her path with that same love and verve and appreciation for, for Yiddishkeit, for people, concern for other people. And as Hashem, if we continue in that day, walking in the, ways of, uh, the same ways of, as Bubby, that would be a certainly at least a Shama for, for her. English Mossad's room is for a client. Mahadima. Mashbarak wiped away tears.